This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Gardner versus Dix. You all have been together for six years. You have two kids together. There was some infidelity early in your relationship, but you got past that. You're now engaged to be married. But this engagement that started on the mountaintop could very well go off a cliff depending on what happens in this courtroom today. Is that right, Ms. Gardner? Yes. Right. You've initiated this case. Tell us why, please. There's been some warning signs. He's very flirtatious. He takes that flirtatious thing about himself outside of the house. Uh, even I have reason to suspect that he's doing these types of things at work when you're supposed to just be making money and taking care of your family. So he's working at work. <laughs> working at work, exactly. All right, Mr. Dix, are you working at work? Yeah. If no, it is. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> and I'll just go in there to just work. Like, every day I go in, you know, have you... But Ms. Gardner thinks you're cheating. What do you have to say about those allegations? Yeah, there's... Yeah, it haven't really went past anything. That's because, a like, lie. any... If you say that's a but... lie, I believe that when you step outside of your relationship, you your mood changes, how you interact with the person changes, everything's different. So that's what woke up my woman's intuition. It's just the difference in the way that he was dealing with me and handling me. And so you've seen this difference, right? And you think Mr. Dix is giving it to somebody else? Correct. Okay. So, tell me what you've seen that actually proves he's cheating. One day, when I was getting ready to go to work, I hear his phone go off. So, you know, I turn around like, okay, you know, that's kind of strange. So, I turn around, and of course, the trust issues are there. If I trusted him, I would have just kept walking out the door, but I didn't trust him. So, it was strange to you that his phone rang when you were going out the door? I mean, his phone probably rings a lot. I mean... No, it doesn't. That's the thing. So, it alarmed me. It was right at the moment that I walked out the door. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, who knows my schedule? Exactly. Like, okay, it's call the person. That's what she's thinking is that he's like, she leaves at this time, so the person, she got, the person got ahead of themselves. But that's correct. Right. That could be a coincidence. <laughs> well, it could be, but when you already on high alert, you're like, what? Right. What is this? Okay, and I, then I, I, hear... I looked in his phone and I saw the text messages between him and a woman saying, would you like to come over to a house that, you know, I invested in, you know, for us to, like, our first starter family home, everything. And He's inviting this woman and over? And you're inviting a woman over there. Exactly. All right. First. So, Mr. Dix, I guess it wasn't just a coincidence. I guess First. your phone's going off at that time for a particular reason. No. Who's this woman you invited over? Yeah, it was somebody, but, you know, they didn't come over and, like, I was testing them. <laughs> I was testing them. Yeah, Do you hear... Wait, 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 wait. Do it you hear the bad. words that are coming yeah. out of your mouth? Yeah, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it, it was... was wrong. It, 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 it was correct. somebody. I did text yeah. them. They didn't come over, so no harm, no foul. Okay, so... Right? Just, wait, wait, wait. Right? <laughs> Way back here, Mr. Color, when I texted them, that might be okay. But when you invited them over, that's, you know, Is that what you drawing this line? Is that where you drawing that, the line? This is the line right here. I invited them over. Because if they had come over, just the question is, what happens? It, it was just a friend, like... And I'm not it wasn't sure a female friend? Came over. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no. Like, like, on everything, like, it was just a female friend, but then nothing was nothing going to happen. No, because, because I saw like... text messages also approaching her sexually, um, you know, telling her what you wanted to do to her, you know, sexually, what you wanted her to do to you. I saw those text messages, and I also saw calls between you two to in your call log. Yes, you did. No, I did. About I, your I, faith. I, I, so, Mr. Dix, are you giving this woman just step-by-step -step instructions? I want you to come no. over, and then I want no. you to do this, and then I'm gonna do this. Is that... You just no. gotta... Uh, just the manual oh. just laid out there. No, I didn't have no no step, no no plan A through Z. Nothing. You're there. lying. Okay, no, but here's I'm the not. thing. What you I wanted Mr. to do, Mr. Dix. Dix, what you missing <laughs> is you may not, and I'm not saying you didn't, but you may not have had a plan, but you don't know what her plan was, right. and she got you home alone. Yeah. And and, and I, you know, I, this is a uh, an argument, a conversation, Mr. Cullen and I've had. 
over the years about how men don't recognize that sometimes you getting trapped in your own trap. Yeah. Right. So, Ms. Gardner, is there anything else that makes you think that Mr. Dix is hunting for another woman? He has a habit of being messy. He... One day, I got a phone call from him while he's at work, and he tells me that uh, there's, you know, some guy confronting him. So, me being his woman, being very protective, and also not wanting his job to be affected, I was worried. So, he did not tell me to come down there, but I took it upon myself. So, when I got down there, I was approached by the male that he was having an altercation with. He explained to me the situation, why he confronted Marcus, and it's because his girlfriend at the time, he sent that girl a penis picture. Mr. Dix did? Yes. So, (laughs) of course, her man got upset, confronted him at the job, and his mouth paid the price. So, did you send her a picture of your privates? Yeah, the way... I wait, didn't wait, really wait. send it. Like, no, 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 you don't. Know. Wait, wait, hold it. Mr. Dix. Now we know where the name comes from, but... <laughs> hey. <laughs> Here's my thing. Exactly. Is that a yes or a no? Because you can't kind of send one of those things. You either do or you don't. It was no purpose. Because, like, we were getting into it. Like, we who? Me and Sinicia. Okay. Like, we would never, like, when we get into it, she always wound up leaving me. Okay, she... speed this along and get you the part where you pressed send okay, and send so a picture on, of your product. So I was on... And it was accidental. Like, I was in my phone, you know, and I would just, like, scroll, and then, like, when it stopped, and then I... Is I this got some a kind of female penis phone. roulette you're doing? That's for it to be an accident. It, okay, wait, 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 no, wait, no, no, hold like, on. like, her, like... Is, uh, this, is this some kind of penis roulette you're doing? You take a picture, no. <laughs> you scroll down your phone, it was hit, and that's what gets it? It was a 50-50 chance that it might have been somebody that I worked with, and it was, so... Okay, if this wasn't enough, has there been anything else? Yes. Okay. We had another situation. One day, this girl, we were... We were, you know, bickering at the time and everything like that. You mean you two were? Yes, we were. Okay. Yeah, and I did that. And so, after that, I went outside and I was trying to calm down and everything like that. That's when my friend came outside and she... Uh, the girl confronted me about what he was doing. She said that he was being very flirtatious with her. He was making sexual passes at her. She said they touched each other sexually. And I did, you know, ask a couple people up there because, you know, he thinks everybody's his friend. And the people he talks to the most, the funny thing is they're the ones that talk to me the most. They doing this. Behind his back. I I don't say nobody up there is a friend. Like, nobody is a friend. I don't hang out with nobody. When I go to work, then I come home. Nobody from work come over there. I don't got nobody number. Like, I don't hang out with nobody. But, Mr. Dix, you're doing doing everything. You may not hang out with him outside of work, but it sounds like you're doing everything at work. You're flirting. You all are sending text messages. All this is going on at work. (laughs) Ms. Gardner, I see that you brought a witness with you. Yes. All right. Ma'am, would you stand, please, behind the podium? All right, and tell us your name. My name is Mira. All right, your last name? Jenkins, uh, Mira Jenkins. All right. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, uh, what is the nature of your relationship to Ms. Gardner and Mr. Dix? Um, I know them through a family member, but, um, I began to, um, hang out with them more last year. So, what is it that you've observed that we need to know about? Marcus, like she said, he's really flirtatious. He was really flirtatious. Um, I know one of my friends, um, she used to tell me that he, um, used to text her asking her to please her orally. She was actually my friend, but I was actually, I was friends with her too, so, you know, I used to tell her, like, don't do that. Like, he got an old lady, you know? If somebody don't want to talk to you no more, well, okay, yo, let me talk to you right quick. Yo, I don't want to talk anymore or something like that instead Miss, of just But you're missing the point. point. You're missing no. the point. Well, I, I think Hell that's... Yeah. Pro- what's the point? The point is, why are you writing about sexual activity? That's the problem. It's not that she had the, uh, 
that she had the gall to say, I don't like what's going on, it shouldn't have been anything going on to begin with. Right. Right. All right, so do you believe that Mr. Dix is cheating? I mean, yeah. You do? Yeah, just from the things that I've seen, I feel like if he's willing to, like, flirt with me knowing that I know his old lady... And we hang out often. Period. Then he would do it with... He'll mess around with anybody. Right. All right, Ms. Jenkins, thank you very much. You can have a seat, please. So, here's the question I have, Ms. Gardner. If you find out that Mr. Dix is, in fact, cheating, what happens? If I find out... Well, when I find out the truth, I believe whichever direction it leads, it, it'll help guide me and give me that, I guess, push and, you know, to move forward, whichever direction that is. You understand what's at stake here? Yes, sir. Because you've heard Ms. Gardner. You know how she feels. Yes. And it's come to this point. Lo, this is what we got. I think we got enough. One, we have the penis picture, and then we have the phone text messages indicating that he invited a woman over while she was at work. For all of these reasons, Ms. Gardner feels pretty sure that Mr. Dix is cheating. She's here for clarity so she can figure out where do I go from here. But the one thing is for sure, there will be no marriage until she finds out what's going on. To help her get that clarity, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, we will call certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt and forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Long pieces for our expert team. <laughs> good day, gentlemen. How are you all? Good, Your Honor. Great, sir. It's good to see you. Now, Mr. Wolf, you performed a forensic voice analysis of Mr. Dix. Is that correct? It is, Your Honor. And, Mr. Platt, you performed a polygraph examination, correct? Yes, sir. You asked Mr. Dix a series of questions, and he gave you answers. Yes, sir. And you each analyzed those answers, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. Let's take a look at the forensic voice analysis. Did you have sexual intercourse with your coworker, whom you sent a photo? No. And, Mr. Platt, you asked the identical question, correct? Yes, sir, Your Honor. And what was his response? He stated no. Mr. Wolf, what did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Told you. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Platt, what did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. All right. Mr. Dix, you're looking happy. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah. You asked another question, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. Let's take a look. Did you have sexual intercourse with your coworker who admitted to Miss Gardner that you were pursuing her sexually? No. And Mr. Platt, you asked the same question. Yes, ma'am. And what was his response? He stated no, Your Honor. All right. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> and Mr. Platt? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. Hey. <laughs> so, I see a smile on this side. I see confidence, brimming confidence on that yeah. side. Yeah, but we got one more question. Mr. Wolf, let's look at what you asked him. Since getting back together with your fiance, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Miss Gardner? No. Mr. Platt, you asked the same question. Yes, ma'am. Did you get the same response? I did. All right. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was also being truthful, Your Honor. <laughs> oh. Myself, right. And Mr. Platt? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I might be a little flirtatious, but... Not a little, a lot. I might be, but in the end of the day, I'm not going to cheat on you. Mr. Dix, there's flirtation, and then there's crossing the line flirtation. Right. Everybody, to some degree, is a little flirtatious, whether they admit it or not. 
But when you cross mm -hmm. the line and start sending explicit messages, I'm going to do this, sending pictures of yourself, you've crossed that line, and that's a line you can't cross. All right. Here's the thing. Relationships work when you decide to be your best self regardless of what the person's doing. If you are being your best, Mr. Dix, it's going to force her to pull up her game. And if you being your best, Miss Gardner, it's going to mm -hmm. force him to pull up his game. Mm -hmm. But if y'all both being petty, it just devolves. So be your best you in this relationship. And don't make that decision based on what he's doing or what she's doing. Base it on, I'm here because I want you to be happy. And if you make that your focus, all this other foolishness goes out the window. You ain't gonna have the energy to check those other women. Right. Right. So, talk to our counselor when you leave, so that will help you as you put all this behind you and move forward. It's gonna help you to tone down that flirtatiousness and so that you all can move forward together mm -hmm. and make that engagement turn into a marriage. As we say in this courtroom, don't cheat yourself out of a chance for a happy, healthy relationship. Quarters adjourned.